Bishop Jake said some time ago, you have to trust him even when you can't trace him. Even when you don't know what God is doing. I mean, that's what trust is. Trust is, I don't have to know. I believe the report of the Lord. And I'm telling you right now, I, I've been speaking it. I will do it until he releases me. The amount of shifting and transferring of peace and health and prosperity and wealth that God is getting ready to allow to descend on this house into the body of Christ. You have to be able to receive that by faith. And, you, and you're gonna have to try because you're caught in between all of the hell and the upheaval that's having, happening in the world. And especially what's going on in Israel, you, you can't really speak to that because there's so much historical and religious implication. At one end, you understand why one is defending themselves, and then on the other end, you can't conceive why innocent people have to die. And you have to be able to trust that God is still in control. And nobody deserves to die if they're innocent. I don't care what religion they are. I don't care what city they live in. I don't care what their ethnicity is. If they're innocent, they deserve a chance to live. But you can still see the enemy's hand. But the just shall live by faith. And I still believe the report of the Lord. Can you say amen? amen. This is the year of wealth and wisdom. In the month of wisdom, I'm going to continue to talk to you about wisdom. And I don't know if any of you all heard about this announcement last week, but uh, going uh, forward from here on, uh, we are permanently open here every Sunday at the Lighthouse Church in North. Um, so don't y'all have me up here by myself. Because the moment you stop coming to church, I'm stopping too. So you better be here, tell your neighbor, no vacations this winter, no vacations this winter. We gotta, we gotta have church. Um, man, the things that God is showing me in my mind is just amazing. The miracles that I've been experiencing is incredible. And, and this flow um, of anointing, me and God have been talking like never before. Like, he my dude, like I can, I can, I can feel him in ways that, I, that I've never felt him before. And let me tell you why. It isn't because God got better, it's because I got mature. And this is one thing you gotta understand. That when you start understanding God on another level, you don't owe God a thank you. He's been the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. When you feel him on another level, that means he is doing something in you. Anybody feel something happening on the inside of you? The things that used to upset you don't upset you anymore. And if they do upset you, you learn how not to speak on it. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Somebody shout, I'm growing. Go to Genesis chapter 41. Ooh, I got a sermon today. I don't know how good it is, but it sounded good to me when I was talking it in my head. Um, Genesis chapter 41. Verse 37, the Bible says, and the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the spirit of God is? And here, here it is, listen to verse 39. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God hath showed thee all this, there is none, here it is, so discreet and wise as you are. So he says, Because you are wise, 
and I'm getting ready to show you how to go from renting to owning. How to go from being the borrower to the lender. He says, because you are filled with the Spirit and you are wise, I'm going to put you over the whole house. And according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. I, I want you to, I, I don't know if y'all heard what just happened. He didn't say according to my word. He says, because you had enough faith to say it, I got enough power to do it. And he says, the only place, now this is the king talking. He says, the only place I'm going to be over you is on the throne. I'm getting ready to make you equal with me in every other aspect. Now, do y'all hear? God is saying, I'm not going to share my throne with you, but I'll share everything else. That's good enough, isn't it? How many of y'all have been having a tough time in the last three or four months? Raise your hand. I don't care if you got deodorant on or not, put it up. This is what the Lord told me to tell you. Are you ready? Better days are coming. That's what we're going to talk about today. High five three people on the way down to the sea to say better days are coming, better days are coming, better days are coming. Oh my God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Better days. So that better days are coming. Um, how many of y'all feel like your life is like a roller coaster? Just and it's like as soon as you settle in and, and you think everything is good, as my sister would say, here comes some tomfoolery. <laughs> Up. Now, just as soon as you find out this is the route I'm going to take, then God said, let me get that rug. We're going in a different direction. It is, it is the nature of God uh, to tell you to go somewhere and not tell you where where is. I can prove it in the Bible. Abraham, go to a place called there. God, where? I'll tell you you're there when you go. Just start walking. Because what you don't know about God is he doesn't have to send you to a specific place to keep his promise he can turn the place into a promise. Like if you just, if you start walking in the direction God told you to go in, he could literally make the miracle up on the way because he's sovereign. That means he knows everything. He's in control of everything. He has dominion over everything. And even when things seem out of control, you better know that God is always in control. Joseph's life is a roller coaster. I'm going to tell you right now, I wouldn't have wanted to live it because he started off being his father's favorite son. And, and you know what happens when somebody likes you? The opposite happens from people who are insecure. They don't like you because somebody else likes you. No, they don't like you because they don't like themselves and they need somebody else to like them for them to be comfortable with themselves. And so as opposed to becoming the kind of person you are, they hate the person you are because it is easier to pull you down than to lift themselves up. So let me just gonna tell you right now, you might as well go ahead and be great because if you don't, they're gonna talk about you. If you do, they're gonna talk about you. So just slap three people and say, do you, baby. Just do you, do you, do you. Do you, boo-boo. This story of Joseph, it is full of, and I'm about to talk about some things that's in your life, it's full of jealousy, full of betrayal, full of lust, full of a lack of loyalty. It's got some grief in there. Um, it's got some desperation in there because this is life. 
in this life you will have some trials and tribulations. Don't, don't think that it's God because it's always smooth. God is in the roller coaster. He's in the new purchase and he's also in the foreclosure. Yeah. He's, he's, he's with you in the apartment. He's with you when you own the house. What you have to stop doing is, is earmarking God to your great experiences and, and thinking that it's the devil when everything isn't going well. Sometimes you're at the prepared table, like Tony said, but sometimes you got to walk through the valley of the shadow of death and notice he prepares the table in the presence of the enemies, but he only promises to walk with you in the valley of the shadow of death. So sometimes you miss God because you're always trying to get to the table and he's waiting on you in the valley. God is in the tears. God is in the pain. God is in the betrayal. God is in the sickness. Every one of those opportunities provides him an opportunity to show you who he is. And that's what all of this is about. God wants to show you who he is. He wants you to be able to trust him no matter what the circumstance may be. That's why the old songwriter said, God is good all the time and all the time. Come on, y'all. God is good. So now we've seen the life of Joseph up and down. He's his father's favorite child. They put a coat on him. His brothers get jealous, throw him in a pit, dip the coat in blood, take the coat back to their father and say an animal ate him up. He's taken out of the pit, sold into slavery to the Midianites. The Midianites somehow get him to Potiphar's house. He gets to Potiphar's house and is accused of, of sexual harassment on Potiphar's wife, goes from there to prison and then ends up being the second in command. Only second in the throne to the man over all of Egypt. And he eventually says in the 50th chapter of Genesis to everybody who either threw me in the pit or accused me of something I didn't do or put me behind prison bars, let me tell you, I don't hate you. What you meant for evil. If I can get you to that point before this sermon is over, that even the people who did you wrong, you can still look at them and say, thank you. It was good that I was afflicted, that I might learn the statues of God. Stop getting upset with the people who threw you in the pit. If it were not for the pit, we wouldn't know who you are. Sometimes you have to understand that God doesn't take you through trouble to punish you. He takes you through trouble to introduce you. We don't know Joseph because of how tall he is. We don't know Joseph because of how rich he is. We don't know Joseph because of his nationality. We know Joseph because of his struggle. You will never make it high if you don't survive low. Your pit has to come before your palace. Raise your hand if you've ever been through hell and high water. Look around, because I don't think there's nobody in here that didn't raise their hand. Anybody online, you can raise your virtual hand. I've been through virtual hell <laughs> and virtual high water. That's how it started. Michi, that's not how it ended. We have finally got to the place where we see a glimpse that God is starting to erase Joseph's dark days. And if I don't get your attention any other time today, I'm telling you that God is about to deal with your dark days. <laughs> Weeping may endure for a night or two or three or four a week, a month, but, but whatever God, 
Whenever he turns that thing, whenever he... Joy comes in the morning. I want you to expect that morning is on the horizon of your life. That God is little by little erasing the dark days. And you're going to have joy. Let me get, matter of fact, let me get my church people joy. Unspeakable joy. I'm talking about the joy that the world didn't give and the world can't take it away. Tell your neighbor, you see this smile? It doesn't mean that I'm not struggling. It doesn't mean that I don't have enemies. It doesn't mean that I'm not worried. It's that I have chosen to be content no matter what state. Now watch this. I want you to know that the trouble you have been through has caused people to label you. Now they don't, look at your boy. They don't say it to your face. When you get up on them, hey boo, how you doing? What up dog, what up cuz? Whatever it is, when they, when they see you up close, they call you by your name. How are you, John? But when you walk away, yeah, that's the one that so you got to know, people are always talking about what they think they know. So, so Joseph, up until now, has been known as the boy from the pit. But now, his label, now we're in the text, he will no longer be known as the boy from the pit. He is no longer known as the ex-slave. He is no longer known as uh, the person who has a felony on his record. He is no longer known as the person who was in prison. God is about to change his name, and now they're going to have to reference him based on the gift that God has. Are y'all listening to me today? What we are witnessing in the life of Joseph, and I hope I got about 500 people who understand that what I'm speaking about, Joseph, is getting ready to happen in your life. What we are witnessing before our very eyes is that Joseph, finally, after years of punishment, the dark days are about to disappear. He's about to go from a slave to a statesman. He's about to go from a prisoner to a, uh, a palace. He's about to go from being disrespected to a ruler. He's about to go from grief to gladness. He's about to go from pain to pleasure and better days are coming. Touch your neighbor and say, better days are coming. Better days are coming. This is the brokest I will ever be in my life. Better days are coming. Some y'all ain't. I'm a, I, I got all day. Better days are coming. Find you a neighbor because you, you're gonna need somebody to tell. Better days are coming. And remember, I told you that better days were coming. Better days are coming in my finances. Better days are coming in my relationship. Better days are coming on my job. I'm about to see something different when I look in the mirror. Sickness is about to leave my body. Better days are coming. If you believe it, give me some noise in this place. Now what I'm trying to get you to do is I'm, getting, I'm trying to get you to speak those things that are not as though they were. Because if you wait until the better days come, then you won't receive the benefits of the better days because the just shall live by. So you have to shout in advance for the expectation that better days are coming. And when better days, here's worship. No. The Bible says he is seeking, the Father seeks that which worship him and they that worship him shall worship him God says, I'm looking for better people so I can give better days. I'm looking for people who used to be upset about the pit who can say, now, though he slay me. 
yet will I trust them. I'm looking for people who used to will cuss you out, but now I'm saying, you know what? You're not worth my time because what God's about to do for me. Tell somebody, you got to get better. 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 You got, it ain't going to get better until I got I to gotta slow down because we're going to be done ran out of here. Y'all going to see me on 59 barefoot. Mary, all of this is happening while the boy from the pit is in the palace. See, you're not shouting because you can't see yourself there. I, I, I know where you see me naturally, but I ain't here. I, I know what you see when you look online at your bank account, but that ain't your real story. It's just a snapshot of a journey. I know you look at your hand and you don't see nothing, but that's good news because if it's empty, somebody can put something He's in a palace. And he's about to be a vice president. Started from the bottom. Now, let me see if I got some thugs. Give your neighbor a high five and say, I started from the bottom. But I'm here. Back then, they ain't want me. Don't y'all do that. Don't do that. Oh! Don't do that. I got to operate in my preacher thing right now. Don't do that to me. Somebody say better days are coming. Listen. Every struggle you have ever gone through. Let me say it this way. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Every incident is actually an introduction. If you would stop being embarrassed about your story and start to tell your story, you could introduce yourself to the person who can put you in the position. In fact, Everybody just look at somebody and say, yeah, I did it. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, can we get to what God... I, I don't have a ministry for people who haven't done anything, but I can preach to people who got scars. I can preach to people who've been through some stuff. Tell somebody, yeah, I did it, I did it, I did it, okay? Okay, yeah, I did it, but guess what? You did some stuff too. And I ain't gonna judge you for what you did, and I need you to get off of my back for what I did, because the truth is we're all headed to the next level. So, every incident is an introduction. Every time you go through something, God is building your story. Because when you get to the next level, you can't be boring. How did you get here? I just, <laughs> I was blessed by my parents to get here. Who want to hear that? But if they hear you say, I was, I was feeding my kids government cheese and, and I had wick. Yeah, yeah, you, come on, talk to me. And, and, and I was catching the bus. And, and I'm, saying not every, I'm not saying everybody needs to struggle to get there, but it's something about a story. And, and don't be embarrassed about where you started. Okay, if, you were, if you're on welfare, that's just how it started. It, it's not about how you start. It's about how you finish. You cannot be embarrassed about the route that God used to get you where he wants to take you.
The pit is a part of the story. The sickness is a part of the story. Being in a foreign land is a part of the story. Not knowing where you fit is a part of the story. Being insecure about your physical appearance is a part of the story. Not having the best grades in school. You know how amazing it's going to be that you got to be a CEO with a D average? Come on, y'all. Everybody want to act like you got good grades in high school. No, you didn't. If you did, we would have knew about it. But I was, I was good in school. No, you were not. C's get degrees, don't they? I'm going to tell you, there would have been times I would have asked God for a C. I looked at my grade sometime and said, Lord, I got to go see my mama. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Don't you make the mistake of defining me where you met me. You met me in a pit, but baby, let me tell you, I got out of there a long time ago. Ha! You, you met me in prison. I've been out of there a long time ago. You met me depressed. And see, this is what happens. This is why most relationships break up because they met you in the pit, but they had no capacity for your update. So when you became somebody different, they can only deal with where they met you. But tell somebody, we got to end this. Let's end it now because I'm not fair anymore. Touch yourself and say, I updated myself. I updated myself. I told myself I wasn't taking that kind of stuff no more. I told myself I wasn't going down that road anymore. I told myself I wasn't selling for that no more. I'm not there. Anymore. When I was a kid, I was sick all the time. Sick all the time. I can't remember, my mom had to remind me what age it was. She took me to the doctor one time, they found a hole in my heart. So whenever I would go to the dentist, I would have to take pills because I, I had a, um, what's that thing called, my, a heart murmur. And so if the blood would go back down, it would cause me a cardiac episode. I, I was always sick. I, used to, I was the kid walking around in school with a heart monitor on. And I had to push the button every time I felt pain. And, and, and I, had, I had pushed the button and it had this little paper that printed out of it and it had a graph. They told me I would never play basketball because my heart couldn't take it. Well, <laughs> well, I did that. Because I'm not where you met me. That was the devil trying to take my confidence before God could show me his evidence. Not only am I not sick, but every time the devil tried to make me sick, God was somehow, and my mother, every time we would go to the doctor, somebody would diagnose and then another doctor would say they couldn't find it. One doctor would diagnose, another doctor would say they couldn't find it. God says, listen, if you have enough patience to get to the second opinion, if, if, if you just won't settle for what they said about you the first time, I can show you that I was trying to build something inside of you. I had eczema, hay fever, headaches, heart issues, all my life growing up. All of my life. Now I'm cool as ice, twice as nice, ain't had a bad day in my life. Oh, you laughing, but that's the truth. I'm about to tell y'all something. And this is going, this is going, 
Whoo, Lord have mercy. Brother Keith, I'm almost nervous to say it. When Pharaoh brought Joseph into his house, the first thing the shell he told him to do was to interpret his dreams. Now let me tell you something. The reason why this is important is because if you go back and read chapter 37, he has already interpreted his own dreams. So now Pharaoh says, I need you to do for me what you did for yourself. Look at me. To everybody who got a word, your gift got to work in you before it can work for you. I'm trying to figure out how you can prophesy over somebody else's life and you ain't got a word for yours yet. Oh, come here. Don't get quiet. If the word works coming out of your mouth, I ought to see some evidence in your life that the word worked for you before it can work. The thing that God is going to do for you next is the thing that you are starting to see work in your life. So when you're trying to find out your purpose, I want you to start looking at where you are starting to break through in your personal life. And then I want you to galvanize energy around that glimmer of hope and turn it into a business. Turn it into a conglomeration so that you can do what you did for you one time for us many times. He's interpreting Pharaoh's dreams because he first interpreted his. Remember, he says, I see sheaves bowing to me. It is actually a metaphor for the fact that he actually saw his brothers bowing to him. And if you read the rest of the text, his brothers actually did bow because he became second in command only to Pharaoh. You see, but most people will have a problem with you when you see yourself above them. My only problem with Joseph is not that he had the dream, but he should have kept his mouth closed. Because everybody cannot handle the fact that you already see your future and they still struggling with their past. Your deliverance, look at me. I, is this helping anybody? Your deliverance scares people. There are people in your friendship circle, your family circles, in your life, on your job, they are so afraid of you ever realizing the full potential of who you are. Why? Because they know, they already know how high you can go. They are just hoping you never figure it out. Oh God. So they say stuff to you like, I wouldn't do all of that. It don't take all of that. Well, you wouldn't, but I am because I see myself. You got to stop seeing yourself where the trouble started. And you got to see yourself where the promise is. Just because you fail once doesn't make you a failure. Get up and try again. Okay, you didn't get the last job. That mean you're going to quit? Or does that mean you're going to say, oh, well, I didn't get it. You know why? Because it's not because I'm disqualified. It's because that's not the one God wanted me to have. You'd be surprised how many things you are stressed out about that is not a result of your lack of qualifications. It's God blocking it. Watch it, watch it. Yeah. Yeah. I said, I'm going to let you get a job and I keep telling you, you're an entrepreneur. Okay, we can fight all day. We can fight all year if you want to. I'm telling you to start something and you're trying to go back and get into the system that I brought you out of? Somebody shout, God blocked it. <laughs> Joseph, his dream came true. So Pharaoh said, well, if your dream came true for you, how about you look at my dream and tell me what God is saying to me? 
What's amazing is four chapters ago, the boy was in a pit with dirt underneath his fingernails. And now he is sitting next to a king about to be anointed at second place. And he didn't know that all of the stuff that he went through was God taking him through so that the king would respect him when he showed up. God says, I'm taking you through because even if people don't believe you, they won't be able to doubt your testimony. See, you can't doubt breast cancer survivor. So you can doubt the person and say, well, I don't know if her prayers work. Well, they must work because stage four breast cancer, come on, talk to me, somebody, $30 million worth of medical bills and now debt free and healed. You can't doubt the testimony. I need, listen, real quickly, every breast cancer survivor in this place, stand to your feet. Now watch, watch this. Do what you just did, ma'am. Just do what you just did. Go ahead, how you, you know you're sashaying. Go on and sashay like you sashay. You know why she doing that? Because the testimony will give you swag. Come on, when God has brought you through something, you don't care what nobody got to say about it. How about a round of applause for a God? That's a healer. I wish some of y'all would act like that the next time God brings you out. I need about 400 people here to act like that. Did God ever bring you out of anything that you thought you were not going to get out of? I dare the redeemed of the Lord say so. Before you sit down, let me say this. The best decision that Pharaoh ever made was promoting Joseph. Okay? The next season of your life will either be good or bad based on who you decide to promote in it. Now go ahead and sit down. You're going to sit down now since you're ready to sit down. The next season of your life, if you look up and you're still in the pit, it's because of who you promoted. If you look up and you're in the palace, it'll be because of who... I'll talk to y'all over here. If you look up and it look like you're on your way up, it's because you promoted the right people. If you look up and you're looking from a place down, it's because you promoted the wrong people. This next season of your life is going to be connected to who you promote in your life. Now this is hard because everybody's looking for a promotion. And when you become king or queen, everybody's going to want to be on. But you're going to have to understand the difference between people who want you and who want what you offer. See, some people get close to you because of who you're close to. Can I speak to people who have great relationships? If, if you do nothing else, listen to me. When God puts you next to great people, it is your responsibility to guard great relationships. You don't let people in just because they like you. We can be cool, but that does not give you access to that. Just, just because we cool don't mean I got to give you all of my relationships. Just because we're cool, I got I to gotta try the spirit by the spirit. I don't need you getting in the intimate environment and embarrassing me because you don't know how to act in a palace. You got to be careful. You got to be careful. People will be making side deals with your connections. And then bad-mouthing you to them
He was done. Yeah, you stingy. No, I'm smart enough to know that you're selfish. Let me hurry up because I ain't even got to, I ain't got time to play with y'all all day. Who am I helping? Make some noise if I'm helping. If I'm not helping you, something wrong with you, not me. Because all I'm doing is preaching the word of God. Your next promotion in your life is going to determine whether you stay in the pit or go to the palace. Pharaoh basically said these words, and I'm, I'm using a paraphrase. I'm parenthetically saying this. Um, he says, the reason I promoted you, Joe, um, was because I couldn't find anybody who had more of God's spirit in them than you. He did not mention his education. He did not mention anything connected to his physicality. He said, I promoted you because I saw the spirit of God all over you. Now listen to this. When you are interviewing for the next position in your life, can you please put a spiritual question on the test? I need you to start figuring out, do people have the right spirit? Now listen, I'm not talking about their spirit, I'm talking about the spirit. And this is where we get fooled. We say, well, she had a good spirit. That's, that's okay, because that spirit can change. You don't, you don't need people who have a good spirit. You need people who have the Basically, do you know the Holy Ghost? Because see, the Holy Ghost will keep you from trying to slit my throat when you get an opportunity to. The Holy Ghost will keep you from exposing me when you get upset and angry. The Holy Ghost will keep you from trying to circumvent what God is doing in my life. A good spirit can change, but God, he changes not. He's the same yesterday, today. Ask your neighbor, do you have the Holy Spirit? No, 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 let me, let me ask this. Let me, let, me, let me ask a better question. Does the Holy Spirit have you. Y'all doing all right? He says because of the spirit in you. Look at the two things that you get when you got the spirit. He says, I'm going to give you my house and my people. And only in the throne will I be greater than you. He went all the way from a pit, I'm gonna keep saying this, to a palace, because no matter where he was, he kept the spirit in him. Now, how many of y'all let your spirit change or let the fruit of the spirit change based on what you're going through currently? Mm. Ah, y'all not gonna say it. If you can't say man, say ouch. As long as everything is going good, you're in a great mood. And the moment you don't understand something, some of y'all spirit changing right now. Oh, hey. you was just all oh, spirit of God. Now you just. Bible says you got to try the spirit. What, what's your spirit like? Not your attitude. What, what, what is your relationship with the Holy Spirit? Not what is your relationship with comfort. Because you can act good when you're comfortable. You can act good when everything is, but when it's all going crazy and you can't understand, you don't know whether you're going or coming. You don't know who's for you, who against you. 
how is your spirit in the presence of demons? Because you cannot be dogmatic about a person with a bad spirit when you allow theirs to change yours. Even in Potiphar's house, Joseph had the right spirit. Even when he was in cuffs for a rape he did not commit, he had the right I know what your palace spirit is like, but what's your pit spirit like? Why are you waiting on better days? What is your spirit like in the wait? Come here, Holy Ghost. Come here, Holy Ghost. Because we believe that when people do us wrong, it gives us a reason to act ugly back. The Bible says, love those who despitefully use you, give bread to those who give you a stone, In fact, your ability to do the opposite of your enemies is what gets you the elevation. Nice nasty is not a nice response. Oh, yeah. Because he had the right spirit, God put him over the people and the house. See, until you get the right spirit, you can only run part of it. If you want to be over the whole thing, you got to be able to control your spirit. God says, how am I going to give you a company with 15 employees? You might fire everybody because you got an attitude. <laughs> this is so good. I always know I'm preaching my best sermons when y'all get busy when I'm preaching. Y'all all of a sudden just... just But I'm getting ready to show you the history of Joseph's life. How many of y'all believe the Bible anyway? If you believe, okay. Watch this. What did Pharaoh just say? I'm gonna put you over my whole what? House. Let's go back. First of all, when he was a kid, his daddy put him over the house. Because he gave him a coat of many colors. When he got into Potiphar's house, what did Potiphar say? I know you were a slave, but I see potential in you. I'm putting you over my house. When he got to prison, what happened? The butler and the baker saw a vision and they put him over the prison house. This is the fourth house that Joseph has been over because he's so anointed that he come in under, he always finishes. Oh God, I don't, I don't know who this is for, but God told me to tell you, you have an over anointing. Slap somebody and say, I got an over anointing. If you will be patient enough, God is going to put you over everything. Somebody shout the fourth house, the fourth house, the fourth house, the fourth house. What I'm telling you is you have no clue the type of elevation that God has assigned to your life. Every time Joseph gets to a place, he gets over it. If you would just be patient and just wait on God and not let it change your spirit, it won't be long before you're over it. And by the way, it took him 13 years to get here, which means that God may not come when you want him to come. How many of y'all get impatient when God doesn't do it as fast as you want him to? Raise your hand. And you end up walking away from a thing you were getting ready to run. You end up getting frustrated with a thing he was getting ready to give you dominion over. 
Joseph figured it out. All I do is win. No matter what. So if I just am patient enough to see the salvation of the Lord, it won't be long before even my enemies have to upgrade me. I'm telling you right now, hear the words that are coming out of my mouth. Your testimony is going to be so strong that even your enemies won't be able to resist blessing you. I ain't finished out yet. I need you to hear me because wisdom requires you to be able to respond differently in the future than you did in the past. You don't get to step into tomorrow and tell tomorrow to accept the person that made yesterday bad. If you don't, if a man is going to change, it has to be by the renewing, which means that you can't be in church every week asking God to get you over a trauma that happened five years ago. Either you will let it go or you will never grab your destiny. One of the two. I just need somebody to say, I'm done with it. I'm done with it. They didn't see my value. They overlooked me. They forgot about me. Okay, God made it happen. There's another house he wanted me to be over, and it obviously wasn't the house that I was in. He wanted me to be somewhere else, and that's where you're on your way to. Who is this message for? Who am I talking to? Look at this timing. Anybody in here around the age of 30? Let me see your hands if you're around the age of 30. See, because this is a sweet spot. Let me tell you something. At 30, you're still around here talking about you, how young you are. Have you ever heard little 20 and 30 year olds talking about, and I'm only 22, did nobody ask you how old you were? Keep going to bed and waking up while you're up here bragging about your youth. You ain't got no money though. It's a little young self. This 30 spot, it's important because you're young enough to be called young, but you're too old to act young. See, I don't be trying to bother y'all, but y'all be trying to pump me. I'm, look, you, you too old to be talking about you got time, but yet you have enough time to do what God has called you to do. Joseph is 30 years old, which means that he's going to suffer for 13 years before he actually gets the blessing. This is the season of your life. Listen to me where you have enough strength to struggle. See, because if you struggle any later than this, see, the older you get, the more set in your ways you get. How many of y'all, the older you get, you just say anything to come to your mind because you're like, I'm old and I ain't got time to be taking. Y'all gonna see, you gonna see. I was 28 when I started this church. You're going to see. It's been 14 years. I know now that God sends the struggle at the same time you have the strength. And they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength and they will mount up with wings like eagles. They will walk and not be weary. They shall run and not faint. Touch somebody say, I promise you I'm not going to quit. I promise you I'm not going to quit. You're going to look up and I'm going to have everything that I dreamed about. You're going to look up and I'm going to be everything I told you that I was going to be. I was just waiting on God to do it. Now, if you're not sitting next to nobody who's glad for you, look at somebody else because they're not happy for you. Just tell them, I told you I was going to do it. I told you I was going to do it. I told you I was going to do it. I told you I was going to be it. I told you that it was coming. I promised you. Why do I have you talking to them? What did Joseph do? 
he interpreted his dreams, which means they met him as a prisoner and found out he was a prophet. You met me here, but you didn't know that God was going to use me. Somebody shout, I'm going to the next level. I'm going to the next level. I'm going to the next level. By the time I finish opening my mouth, I'm going to have everything that I prophesy. By the time I finish prophesying, matter of fact, I prophesy to you that everything that you touch is going to be yours. Every place your foot shall tread, God is going to give it to you. If you believe it, make some noise in this place. Say, that wasn't a pit. That was experience. That wasn't prison. It was experience. That wasn't a divorce. That was an experience. That wasn't a bankruptcy. That was God giving me wisdom. You have to start out there so that God can see if he can trust you there. If you complain in the pit, you're going to complain in the palace. See, a lot of people think that if they had more, they would complain less. That's not true. You'll get more and still be complaining about not having as much as somebody else. Your experience is your experience. And you don't have to live nobody else's life. And guess what? They ain't got to live yours. People have been, listen, tell your neighbor, you think you can handle what I got? You, you think you want my life? You think you can handle what I go through? You were uniquely built to handle what you have. Listen, balcony, listen to me. My father... My father, listen, I wish you could have met my biological father. He was a genius. My biological father was a genius. He told me once, he said, son, he said, he said, make sure that if you do anything in your life, you're yourself. He says, because if you are not yourself, you rob the world twice. He said, number one, you rob them because you can't be who you're trying to be. And number two, you rob them because you're not being who you're supposed to be. You sitting around here trying to be Pharaoh, you need to thank God that you're Joseph. Because the truth is, Pharaoh eventually loses his job. No, I got Bible. The Bible says there arose a Pharaoh that knew not Joseph. That means that second in command outlasted the person who put him in position. Oh God. What are you going to do when you finally wake up and realize that you're going to outlast anything that tried to kill you? So why are you swatting flies? Why are you arguing with gnats? They're going to die and you're going to still be on your way up. Touch five people and shout, I'm still here. The devil thought he had you, but you're still here. They thought if they took the contract from you, it was going to kill you, but you are still. Watch this. And just because they got the contract don't mean they got the peace. Oh, 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 y'all not here with me today. Here you are trying to get the thing they took and they envious of the thing you got. Don't you trade in your payment for somebody else's position. You better be glad with what you left with. 
Help me, Holy Spirit. Here you are worried about the thing you lost and the thing you left with. The people who still have it wish they had what you had. Somebody shout time. This is why this is important. He said, Joseph, I am promoting you because you have the spirit. Number two, I am promoting you because you have wisdom. Not the smarter you become, the wiser you become. And if you stop solely depending on education and start depending on wisdom, you won't have student loan debt because you're trying to buy it. You have to attain it. In all thy getting, get understanding. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of Wise. Where, where are the people who want to be wise? Not just good, but wise. Not just famous, but wise. Not just rich, but wise. So you're going to get all that money, but if you don't have any wisdom, you're going to spend yourself back to the apartment that you were born in. Wisdom! I hope I help. Listen, if you get this, if you get this in the Lord, in the day of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I promise you, if you get what I'm saying today, that insecurity and depression, you know that thing that gets on you that you can't explain? It'll just go away. But you gotta, you gotta open your spirit up to accept this. And right now, I sense, I know it because I've been doing this 28 years. I'm battling with your opinion I'm battling with some of y'all's expression, and here you are praying to a God who says, why should I listen to you? Because you were not listening. To me, he promoted them because he finally got wise. You'd be surprised at what would come your way if you would get wisdom. starts in my spirit and if you do that I can guarantee you that better days listen what did what did Joseph do for Pharaoh he interpreted his dream look at look at God the man has chariots, he has palaces, he has concubines, he has wives, he has food, wine, money, weapons, army, land, but he can't interpret his own dream. He oversees everything, but can't see for himself. So look at God in his infinite wisdom. He makes Joseph useful by making him and gifting him with the one ability that the king doesn't have for himself. Instead of praying to be king, you should start thanking God that you have the one thing that the king needs. And when you stir up the gift inside of you, listen, the king will call you to the kingdom. And the greatest thing about being in second place is you have the seat without the responsibility. Everybody wants to be king. But sometimes you just need to be grateful because God gave you the one thing the king doesn't have. And when you find out your purpose in life, the king will find you useful. The man that helped Bill Gates create Microsoft is rich too. Go look it up. 
The second in command at Microsoft has a yacht called the Octopus. It is, you know why it's called the octopus? How many legs does an octopus have? It's called an octopus because it cost him $800 million. From second place. So while you're trying to be first all the time, it wasn't the first Adam that got us out of our situation. It was the second Adam. Some of you all need to understand, listen to me African American people. Our problem is, is that we would rather control 100% of nothing than have 10% of something. This is why our churches are not as strong as they can be because the moment we get there, some preacher in the church decides that 50 of the people in the church belongs to him and then he splinters off and goes somewhere else instead of being a part of something great. Now you're a ruler over nothing. We can't work well together. The moment somebody tells you how good you did, now you think that's the opportunity for you to go be king. But God needs some Josephs who are talented and gifted, but will support a vision that's bigger than themselves. Y'all ain't got to say man, say ouch. You'd rather have a business with two clients rather than be a part of one that has many clients because you want to be able to say, I own it. But what sense is owning nothing? Okay, you own it, but you're struggling. Oh, listen, listen. Y'all hear that? That's that church mouse, you hear? On cotton. We got to come together. We, we got to come together. We got we to gotta corral. We got to coalesce. We have to share ideas. Yeah, but I know why we don't. Lack of wisdom. We still haven't figured out what together we'll accomplish. And so we're splintered. We don't even like ourselves. That's why we have no kingdom. Because everybody's a Pharaoh in our society. We won't, we won't, we won't, we won't come up under solitary leadership. So we just, we, we'd rather have a church on every corner. And, and, we, and we'd rather preach to five people than to support somebody and help them save five souls a day. Let me tell you something about business, and I'm going to finish this. If you're in business and you're not profitable in the first three to five years, you're either in the wrong business or you're doing the right business the wrong way. If you're still in it 10 years later, talking about I'm, I'm waiting on a miracle, get out. Because you're not in the right business. It doesn't take 10 years to turn a profit. If you're in the right business and you know what you're doing in the first three to five years, you should be profitable. If you're in year 12, still hoping for a miracle, close it and go help somebody else. Are y'all laughing at me? But I'm saving you the stress of trying to make something live that's already dead. It's dead. It's just on life support. Something else is breathing for it. Everybody shout wisdom. wisdom. Say it again. Say wisdom. wisdom. Wisdom will make your enemies promote you. Oh, I like you, whoever you is. I got nine minutes. You don't speak for everybody, doc. John 10, 36 says that Jesus was sanctified and he was sent. Sanctified and sent. 
sanctified and sent. Sanctified, then sent. Process before promotion. Most of us like the idea of being sent, but we don't like the idea of sanctification. You got to go through something. You got to go through a pit and Potiphar's house in prison in order to get to the palace. You have to be sanctified before you're sent. Everybody wants to be sent, but not everybody wants to be sanctified. But you cannot skip class and expect to get the diploma. God says, I can't promote you because to do so would be unwise. If I gave you everything you're asking for without wisdom, you'd be a failure. And because I'm your father, I, that's bad for business. What does the Bible say in Psalms 23? For his name's sake, which means his name is on the line. So God says, I'm not going to put you in a position to embarrass me. So until you're ready for the next level, I'm going to keep you at the one you're on. How many of y'all ready for the next level? Let me tell you the things God is going to give you on your way. Number one, write this down. God says, the first thing I'm going to give you when I promote you is a ring. I'm going to give you a ring. What is a ring? Do y'all remember back in the days where you would see, um, they would put wax on a document and they would put the ring, so the ring seals it. It's a signet. It, it means that everything that's in the document has gone from being, watch this, an opinion to a decree. So God says, I'm getting ready to give you a ring, which means everything that you say, I'm going to give you the power to seal. <laughs> which means if you say debt free, it is so. If you say cancer skips a generation, it is so. If you say that my children will grow up happy and healthy, it is so. If you say that I'm in this marriage and there is no divorcing, it is so. God says, I'm giving you the ability to seal everything you say. Acts 1 and 8 says, ye shall have power. Somebody say, God, put a ring on it. Number two, I'm going to give you a robe. I'm going to give you a robe. Not only did Joseph have a lot of houses in his life, he had a lot of robes. His father gave him a robe. Potiphar gave him a robe. And now he's getting another robe from Pharaoh. If I was Joseph, I would have had robophobia. Because every time he got a robe, somebody took it from him. But then I started to praise God when I studied this, Melba, because I realized that at first we thought the favor was in the robe. But then you have to ask yourself, if he kept losing robes, why didn't he lose favor? Because the favor wasn't in the robe. The favor was with Joseph, which is why the Bible says everywhere he went, he found favor. I prophesy in your life right now that nothing you lose will keep you from getting what God has for you. Everybody say a robe. Number three, God gave him a rank. He gave him a rank. What does that mean? The Bible says that Pharaoh put a chain on his neck. You got to understand how important this is because the last time we saw Joseph in chains, they were handcuffs. But now he has a chain around his neck, and it is a gold chain, and that chain absolutely uh, rectifies the fact that his rank has risen. I'm speaking to somebody on your job right now. You are about to be ranked and promoted above people whose degrees outrank you. God is about to change your rank. Everybody say, God changed my rank. The next one he changed was a ride. The Bible says that he gave him chariots. All right? Now, you got to understand what a chariot means in this day and time. The chariot represents movement and progress. I don't know who this is for, and I'm almost done. Just tell your neighbor, I won't be here much longer. God is about to bring progress and movement into your life. Here's the next thing God will change. Reputation. His name was Joseph. Right? 
But the Bible says that Pharaoh changed his name. And the name that Pharaoh gave him, it meant revealer of secrets. God says, the gift that you have, I'm going to make your name great before men. And I'm going to change your reputation so that no matter what you have been through, when you get to the right person, it will be a clean slate. Listen to me, this is, this is for somebody. You will not, Mark, your pastor said this, you will not be judged by the mistake you made in your previous season. It will have no bearing on what God is about to do at the next season of your life. The person who's about to elevate you is not even going to ask you where you came from. Okay. And here's the last one. God says, after I do all of that, I'm going to give you a ring, I'm going to give you a robe, I'm going to give you a rank, I'm going to give you a ride, I'm going to change your reputation. Here it is. And if you're looking for it, I'm going to give you romance. Now, why y'all shouting so loud now? Come on, let's, let's have church then. Look at Jesus. Look at him move now, huh? He moving. He wasn't moving before, but he moving now. Pharaoh gave Joseph a wife. It's a spirit of rebellion on this side of the room. Joseph was given a wife. And she gave him two sons. The first son she gave him, thank you, Holy Ghost, his name was Manasseh. Watch this. Manasseh means I forgot. That means that when God does send you your spouse, they're going to be so, so good that you're going to forget all of the bad relationships you had. Oh, y'all don't want to shout. Touch your neighbor and say, Lord, send me somebody that's going to make me forget everybody. Oh, y'all ain't shouting. God said, I'm about to send you somebody that's going to make you forget everybody who used you. I'm going to send you somebody that's going to make you forget everybody who left you. If I'm talking to you, give God some glory. I need every woman to give another woman a high five and say, Lord, send Manasseh right now. Send him right now. Send him right now. I'm tired of remembering how my heart was broken. Send me somebody that'll make me forget. I think this done turned into a singles conference. I need every woman who believes that God is going to send a Manasseh your way to give God about 15 seconds of prayer. Uh-oh. 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 Somebody got a tambourine. Listen. I need every single woman in the room to prepare yourself to forget everything. When he comes, you're going to forget you were lonely. When he comes, you were going to forget that you were bitter. When he comes, you're going to forget every promise you made to yourself about what you wasn't going to deal with. Here he comes, here he comes. next relationship going to be so good you're going to forget how bad all the other ones were. Now, I ain't never seen y'all women so happy. I've been preaching about salvation all day. You're like, I'm saved. Oh, man. Oh! How you <laughs> Woo! 
It's all good. He said they had a second son. His name was Ephraim. Ephraim's name means to be fruitful. Oh, y'all missed it. You missed it. God says when you get in this next relationship, I ain't just talking about babies, but y'all gonna be fruitful and multiply. I'm tired of being with people who subtract from me. I'm looking for somebody. Somebody shout multiply, 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 multiply. Y'all gonna be rich together. Y'all gonna turn up together. Y'all gonna build. Somebody shout better days, better days, better days, better days. Better days, better days, better days, better days. Somebody shout better days. Let me tell you how it ends. He says what you meant for evil. God turned it around for I feel like it now, y'all. For my good. Give your neighbor a high five and shout neighbor. God told me to tell you that not many days hence, all things are gonna start to work together for your good. D did they act like they were happy? Roll your eyes at them and find somebody else. Tell them neighbor, God is getting ready to turn things in your favor. Did they shout? Find someone else and look them in the eye and shout neighbor. I said all of that to say better days are coming. Weeping me endure for night. Uh, joy is coming in the morning. Get you a praise partner and shout, neighbor, I've been down, almost level to the ground. But God told me to tell you, he's about to pick you up, dust you off, and start you, start you on your way. Anybody believe it? Anybody receive it? Shout, yeah! God's gonna turn it around. 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 I feel a turnaround. I feel a shift. I feel a shift in the atmosphere. I feel a shift. I feel a shift. I feel multiplication. I feel a shift. Hey, 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 hey. I feel a shift. I feel a shift. I feel a shift. What the enemy meant for evil. gonna turn it around for your good somebody shout turn it around 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 I'm trying to leave y'all alone somebody shout turn it around 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 oh somebody ought to just do it in the spirit say turn around 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 yeah! 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 Better days are coming. Somebody 
just got out of the pit mentally. Somebody just got released from prison psychologically. Who the Son has set free ah, is free indeed. Turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around. Turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around. Turn around, 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 turn it around. not weary in your well-doing for you will reap a harvest if you faint not This next season is going to be so good, you're going to forget how bad the last one was. I promise you, I know what I'm talking about. You're not afraid because what's coming is scary. You're afraid because what was is familiar. And you have never known blessing on this level, which is why you're afraid. God is getting you ready for something you're not accustomed to. But you can't have what you had and have what's coming at the same time. There was a sacrifice required to enter into the holies of holies. You gotta pay the cost. I mean, you, you got to pay the cost. At the age you're now, it's a cost. And when you pay it, you don't have to pay it again. It's a one-time deal. And here's the thing, God never asks you for more than you have to offer. But it does require all you have to give. Somebody say, I got enough, I got enough. I got enough. You're not gonna be by yourself. I know it feels like it, but there's some people waiting to support you where you're going. Sometimes what you thought was support was guilt. Because let me tell you something. Listen to me. Anybody who knows that God is working in your life and they are sensitive to the Spirit, when there is a God move that happens, they will tell you to go even at their own expense. When I told my mother I had to go, we had no argument about me having to move. I called her on the phone from Seattle, Washington, Tacoma, Washington, and I told her, Mama, I got to go. Yeah, I know. I know I'm your only son. I'm 20. I got to go. I moved out of the house at 17. I never went back. From the day I left, I've never asked my mother for a dime because I knew where I was going. She didn't have to bail me out. 
She didn't have to visit me in prison. She didn't have to call in a favor to get me out of trouble. I had a destiny. Now, could I have gotten in trouble? Sure. Could all of those things have happened? Yes. But I was covered because I was in my assignment. I moved out in August of 1999 at 17 years old. And when I was a boy, I thought as a boy. But that day I became a man and I put away childish things. Behold, we see through a glass darkly. And I've been through hell and high water, but do you know that God is blessing me so much now that when my sisters and I talk about the past, this is the truth. I can't even remember what they're talking about. My sister always tells me, Kiana, she says, someone with your mind. She says it to me all the time. She says, someone, you, you were there, but my season is so good now that I promise you, I don't even remember half of the stuff she's talking about. And can I tell you something? I don't care to. I don't need the past for me to feel good about the future. I don't need it. If you're in this place today, I just want to see if I can get some of you to just begin to minister to somebody in your section and just tell them better days are coming. Come on, hug three people, tell them better days are coming. Come on, just tell them better days are coming, better days. Somebody say better days, better days, better days, better days. I say it for your mother, your father, your sister, and your brother, better days. Sometimes, just tell your neighbor, it feels cold, and you feel all alone, I know better days are coming, it can be rough in this world, tell somebody to hang on because it ain't easy, but hang on in there. I promise you better days are coming in, yeah. You've seen good and uh, you've seen bad, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been happy and you've been sad, but I promise you standing here today that God told me to tell you that uh, better days. Coming. Come on, everybody say better days, better days. Better days. I promise you, better days, better days. Better days. Better days. Oh. Come on, everybody, hug somebody, minister to their soul, and tell them better days.
Anybody believe it? Anybody believe it? Anybody receive it? Minister to yourself and say better days. Better days in my home, better days in my finances, better days in my health, better days in my mind, better days in my disposition, better days in my perspective, better days in my speech, better days in my outcome, better days. When you come out of the surgery, it won't even be the pain they're telling you is going to be there. For those of y'all who have surgery scheduled, it's going to be painless when you come out. You're going to have the joy of the Lord. Don't you believe what the devil told you? Better days. For your mother and your father and your sister. Can you say better days, better days? Ooh. Can I say this to you? It's only a season that you're going through. Yeah, yeah. But stay focused. And never lose sight I know it personally but People, people, people They don't see the hurt that you feel inside But you gotta keep on smiling Cause everything is gonna be alright Everybody say better days Say better day Better day One more time sing 